Oh, magic makers. Today, I have a great guest on the show. Her name is Dr. Judy Wright, and we are talking about self-care. And yes, I've talked about self-care five million other times, but guess what? Y'all ain't still doing it. So I got to keep bringing on these people to give you their spin on why you need to take some time for self-care. I also love the fact that she wrote a book that called Self-Care is Not a Mani Petty, because it ain't. You don't have to take a whole day spa day off. It could be five minutes in your pantry hiding from your kids. So Judy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. So great to be here. Yeah. So you are a trained physician. Yes. So what made you start to go down this self-care path? Because I know that I was grateful that my general practitioner, she, when I was stressed like a crazy person, the first thing she said to me was like, you should take a yoga class and read the book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Originally, I was pissed. Love that book. <laughs> Originally, I was pissed. I didn't take a half day off of work to hear that. <laughs> But it was what was that kind of that first kind of like crack to show me that it was me. I was the problem. <laughs> so um, thank you. First of all, kudos to your physician. Yeah. <laughs> I know people are not always ready to hear it. Mm -mm, <laughs> not at all. It not at all. Um, and it can sound hokey to some people, right? It does. But it's not. It, it, there is, we accept that we need to maintain our cars. Mm. We accept that we need to make sure other things are okay. We accept that we need to maintain our homes and somehow we don't accept that we need to maintain ourselves. If we turn around and, you know, a couple of years ago, I got uh, my kitchen redone uh, uh, after living here for a good amount of years. It was one of the first things I wanted to do. I realized that made no sense to do that if I didn't do the other things that shored it up, right? right? Like a little flooding happening in the basement and a little this, if something's wrong with the roof, what's right, the point right. to put lipstick on a pig, exactly. right? A lot of us are acting as the pig, mm. putting lipstick on stuff to look okay and we're not okay. Right. And so why did I do it? Because I myself wasn't paying attention to what I was telling others to do. Yeah, I was taking care of other people. Mm -hmm. I was taking care of other things. I was missing out on taking care of myself. Yeah, once in a while I would go to the doctor, but I would miss more doctor's appointments than I went to because I right. was busy. I mm -hmm. had lots of things to do. Um, and then, you know, life, lives. <laughs> you yeah, know, exactly. Um, you get a diagnosis of uh, of cancer, and you suddenly realize. I'm going to have to sit down and take care of this. And even right. then, you're like, I'm just going to take care of this. But I know I had to take some time off. I was really thinking about how am I going to tell my parents? How am yeah. I going to tell my husband and my children? I was still thinking, Kim, about how to take care of other people. Right? Yep. Um, but when I had to sit down and those same people were like, yeah, you're not lifting a finger. You need to recover. Um, I think they thought that it just helped me take care of my body, but it also helped me take care of my mind mm. because now I had to sit with my thoughts. Right. And um, in sitting with my thoughts, there's a lot of things that I realized I didn't like what was happening. I didn't mm. like how it was going on. I realized that I was on the precipice of burnout um, and didn't even recognize it as such. But now that I'm sitting down and my blood pressure is better. Mm. even when I wasn't taking the medication. Right. And you're like, but huh. when I was taking it, um, two medications and I still was uncontrolled. Right, right. You know, different things were happening that was just better, Kim. Yeah. And it's because I started to take care of me. Yeah. And started yeah. focusing on me, which wasn't easy. That took no. some time. No, not at all. I Especially if you're like the energizer you. bunny and you're used to, you know, here, there and everywhere. And, you know, sadly, many people learn this because a health scare says, sit your ass down. Sit down. <laughs> sit down. And, you know, I, uh, I, I think about my, myself, it's that I remember for, for six weeks I had surgery and for six weeks, I, I, I could only like walk. I couldn't lift more than 10 pounds. And I was like, 
okay, what are people, what, what's this like? Like I had like, I, Mike, I was always like running around doing things. And I was like, for six weeks, the best thing I could do for myself was go for a walk. What the hell is that? And it turned out to be like, hmm, I like yeah. walking. Um, that first week though, was it that hard? Oh, that first week, I was like, you know, like, it's kind of like, you know, like you, you take a wild animal out from the wild <laughs> and put him in a cage and they're just like trying to find the escape hatch everywhere they can. And that's how I felt. And it was like, you know, you said two things that I want to further explore is that one, sitting with your thoughts. And I think yeah. part of the reason why we don't sit still is because one, the thoughts, right? If I'm sitting still, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not pushing out whatever thought might be popping in my head. That's right. And the second reason I feel like, you know, especially for type A++ people and y'all know who y'all are, listen to this. I have to earn the right to sit down. Oh, Woo. right. So it's wow. like those two, like yeah. two deep things. Like I have to like have feelings. Oh, damn. There's a lot. Like I've been, I mean, got it. It's been in the closet for a really long time that I don't want to talk about. And then just did I earn the right? Like I'm sick. So other people shouldn't take care of me. I'm whatever. I should be cleaning. I should, 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 should versus it's okay. If it took five seconds to sit down. Right. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. And you said something about, um, a, a disease can sit someone down and right. a lot of us are walking around, you know, I, I, um, currently, don't uh, perform direct patient care, but I used to tell my patients all the time that we should take seriously the stuff that's going on with us and the stuff that's not going on with us, right? Mm -hmm. So in this country, prevention is not what it should be. No, right? once a year, um, maybe. We don't work to prevent diseases. Yeah. <laughs> we work to, to treat them mm -hmm. or keep them where they are right. or, you know, so that they don't progress. Um, but a lot of us, I had, like I said, I had high blood pressure already. A lot of us have medical issues, but those medical issues are lying in the background. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, the moment you have pain, because pain is a thing, right? Ugh, right? The moment you have pain, you suddenly want that taken care of. Exactly. But high blood pressure that they call the silent killer is usually not painful. So people are like, ah, what if I put a little bit more Lowry's or Adobo or whatever? Right you know diabetes ah, we're not you're not wearing that on your sleeve but when you feel pain you're wincing it, it, it's it's knocking at you right. and you do something about it um the same thing with your self-care we treat it the same way we treat the hypertension and diabetes um we're not taking we're not we're not paying attention to it we're not even paying no, no. attention to that. we we're we're uh stressed out we wear stressed out on our sleeves oh the busy bag like it's okay <laughs> like it's regular clothes i'm just gonna put this outfit right. on it's just right? how life is. It's just how life <laughs> exactly is. and we actually glorify it oh god that I, <laughs> I oh. Really glorify I don't know, I, and I don't know how many clients will, you know, I, every week I say, what's your stress level one to five? And I don't know how many, and five being like, oh my God. And I don't know how many clients mm -hmm. come to me and they're four or five on, a, on the regular. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? Like how we manage this? Like, oh, this is just how life is. And I'm like, no, this is not how life is. If I, I get it, if like we're in a period of time, like if you work for the IRS right now, you're a little stressed out. It's tax season. Great. It's but tax then, season. Right? When tax season <laughs> is over, your stress level should come down. Like there's okay to have periods of stress, but if you're pressing that stress button 99.9% .9 of the time, that's a problem. Right. Um, I agree. Uh, so one of the things I tell people all of the time and that I speak to people about is how we normalize mm -hmm. stress in this country. Oh God, yes. Um, and literally we'll say, well, stress is normal. Well, stress is normal. Okay. The problem with saying that is we say it like brushing your teeth is normal. Yeah. <laughs> Combing your hair is normal, right? Uh, yes, you should brush your teeth. If you want your teeth, you should brush them, right? Do uh, do you want to hold on to the stress, right? I, I tend to tell people stress is inevitable. Oh, yeah. But don't make it a norm in your life because 
then you don't even realize you like you just said you're supposed to have ebbs and flows ebbs mm -hmm. and flows all of a sudden it's not going anywhere it's chronic it's constant it's just you don't even have a downtime and yeah. you don't notice it because you've been telling yourself this is normal everybody goes through it right right and now you're not managing it well now we're going to overwhelm mm. you're still not managing it well now we're about to burn out yeah and a lot of people think of burnout as just work. There's more burnout than just work burnout. You know, yeah. you have caregivers who oh, have gosh. caregiver burnout. Oh, yeah. you have, there's, there's such a thing as relationship burnout, you know? Mm -hmm. So burnout can come in all types of forms, but it really comes from not being able to manage our chronic stress well. And what I want for people is not to have chronic stress. You're going to have stress. It's inevitable. Right, right. How are you managing that? How are, you, yeah. how are you dealing with that? You know, because you should. Don't just accept it as, oh, well, you know, everybody has that. Right. Don't do that. So as people are listening to this and, you know, I'm hopeful, you know, one or two of you finally lift your head up and be like, you know, you're, you're, you're making some good valid points here. What are some of the ways that I can start to better manage my stress? So what you don't acknowledge, you don't do anything mm. about Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, what I said, when people normalize it, they don't even acknowledge it. I have to work. Work is going to be stress. So there's nothing I can do about it. That's not mm -hmm. true. Even with the, the our, our, our tax people. Yes, this is a busy season. If you have been doing this for 10 years and haven't figured out how to deal with this busy season yet, you're not acknowledging it. Mm -hmm. You're not. Right. So the first thing you need to do is acknowledge that you do have stressful periods. You do have stressful times. You may even have, you know, every week you don't go a week without feeling stress. OK, that's fine. How do you manage that? Understand what your stress triggers are uh, and how it triggers you. So I tell people stress comes in different ways. There's mental stress. There's emotional stress. There's physical stress. When you're living, uh, um, lifting that heavy weight. Mm -hmm. That's physical stress. Right. Our bodies react to stress in the same way. It's, it, 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 you know, you, you press, uh, press out those stress hormones. It, it kicks off something in your brain. You're pressing out those stress hormones. Our bodies react to stress in the same way. The question is, how do, how long do we allow that stress to just sit there? Yeah. yeah because yeah. when your body is just constantly, chronically pouring out stress hormones to get you through it, that affects your body in certain mm -hmm. ways. If you are somebody who has, say, anxiety, and when you have anxiety, your heart is constantly beating. And if you constantly have anxiety, think about your heart beating at a rate that's way too fast for days. Yeah. Now think about that for weeks. Now think about that. If this was a condition that was just due to your heart, Somebody would get a cardiologist on board mm -hmm. and start talking about what medication we need to give you because your heart is not supposed to be doing that. Our bodies weren't made to go through consistent, constant stress and never get a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to understand your triggers so that you can start to understand what to do about your triggers. Yeah. And then, and this is super important. This is where I start talking about self-care. Because you said something so important, Kim. Self-care does not have to be a half a day, a whole day spa. Is, is, is that self-care? Sure. Going on vacation is self-care, a real vacation, sure. But you can do self-care in as little as five minutes a day. And I and I implore people to do that mm -hmm. because even when you're not feeling stressed, do it anyway. One of the things that I have on my phone is an alarm that goes off a certain time of day. And the alarm is to remind me if I'm not in the midst of driving my car anywhere, <laughs> is to remind me to stop what you're doing for a moment and just take a moment yeah, so that you can reset, mm. recharge. If I'm feeling stressed in the moment, okay. But if I'm not, that's fine too. Get up. Maybe you go outside and breathe in some fresh air. Maybe you turn on some music and start dancing. Maybe you just sit in quiet for mm. that moment. What that does is allow you to reset and recharge and give your brain rest for just that time, five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it is for just that time. But even if you're not feeling stressed, you know what you're doing? 
you're practicing yeah. self-care. You're practicing stress management. You're not learning it. Oh my God, what am I supposed to do when you're stressed? Right, you right. already have that tool in your toolbox to pull it out at any time because you know that as easy as you know your name because you've been doing it. Yeah. You know, everything you, I just said, I, I love that because one of the things I always challenge my clients to do is we all get busy, right? That's just how life is. And I'm always like, if you're not working out or eating, ask yourself, like, what was, what caused that to happen? And what, if you, you know, if this would happen again, then you would do what, right? So that way, when it does happen, you already have a pre-planned program in your mind of, okay, boss told me I needed to work late. I was planning to go to the gym. Okay, I'll go tomorrow morning, right? So there's, oh, like, and so as you were saying, we all know tax season is going to come up. There's going to be a lot of the things coming down on, on your plate. How are you going to manage that so that maybe it's Monday through Friday, you're a little stressed out, but maybe on weekends, you're like, I don't work on weekends so that I can better let the steam valve out so that you kind of start to create those like kind of guidelines as to how are you going to kind of contain this stress in this moment? Because we can't control tax season. Right. <clears throat> right. The other thing you said. And I like, like what you said, because what you just the moment you said the guidelines, I was like, right, boundaries. Yeah. And <laughs> you got to you got to have boundaries. And for a lot of women, like boundaries are really hard. You know, there's a couple of things that you said I want to touch on. I want to go back to when you said I'm taking care of people. And I have several clients, I'm sure back when you were treating, there are plenty of clients who said, well, I got kids or I got an aging parent or I got an aging dog or an aging goldfish, whatever the hell that need me. And so I can't take this five minutes you talk about. That's just, you know, blasphemy or my job is, you know, so busy. I'm the only breadwinner. I'm a single mom. I can't take time out. And, you know, what you just said was like, you have to take time out because that, what happens if you get knocked out of the game? I'll do you one better. You said, they said, I can't take time out for self-care. I used to see women who I would say, you're probably going to need, you know, maybe not emergent, but you're going to need a surgery to deal with this problem that you came to me. Well, I can't do that, doctor, right? Right. I have to take care of children. Mm -hmm. I can't. But this situation that you just came to me about is really affecting your life right now. Right. Which is why you came. You couldn't ignore it any longer. Yeah, but I have, I have children I have to take. Isn't there anybody you can talk to, leave them with, you know? And so something, even something serious as women, my God. Yeah. We mean well. And it's right? Like, we mean well. <laughs> we do. And in my head, it's like, I know that that's probably like centuries of programming. And I was like, at what point is that programming going to get like pushed out of our our psyche that we have to be, you know, the tribe keeper that, you know, no one, like we can't ask for help. And I get it. Like I grew up with a single mom and I know that like when she had health things, it was a problem. I'd be like, well, you know what? I'm going to call Jackie because maybe she can keep you for a night. And then maybe Sally could keep you for a night. And, you know, they said I should be in and out in two days. And so fingers crossed it's two days. But it's, I think asking for that help um, is really hard, especially if you're that like, yes. go, go, go woman, yeah. or you're praised because, oh my God, how do you do it? It is. And that's why you need to practice. That's why you need to practice. Um, you need to, it's it's not easy going back to what you said, especially with the single mothers to show that vulnerability. Yeah. That's not easy. Um, okay. You want to show she, them like, you know, I, I got it. Right. I Meanwhile, got it. I sometimes it. you're like, I don't, but like, I have to put it out there that I do. And one of the other things is that community is not what it once was. Like, mm. even when we were younger, yeah, community was different. Very different. Right? Yeah. There was a lot of people that really lived that it takes a village. Yeah. We are so much more separated now that, you know, I tell people, if you don't have built in support, you're going to have to build it. Yeah, and that sure. may take a little bit of vulnerability, but you're going to have to build that support system because you don't know what could happen. Stuff can happen at any time. We like to think it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Stuff can happen at any time, but we really have to practice that. We really yeah. have to put ourselves out there and um, we really have to 
a lot of us don't have boundaries. No. Or if we have them, we're not good at maintaining them. No. Or we just like just this one time. And then, yeah. you know, the person who is the pusher of that boundary was like, well, she did it before. She'll do it again. And then, you know, they'll find they'll find <laughs> that like button to push, you know, that guilt button on you. And then you'll be like, well, OK. And you just like you just kind of just crumble and they just are just yeah. you get you treat them that it's OK for you to push away that boundary. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So like I always tell people and for everybody listening, if you don't have any boundaries, go get you some. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, go and, get you some. And it's okay to, to feel, you know, to feel, uh, it's okay that you can say no. And, um, initially, yeah, you're going to have a lot of angst because you're, you know, trying to hold your ground. But if you think about how many times you've asked someone to do something for you and they've said no, hmm. they protected a boundary, you know, hmm, exactly. Um, and, and so you have to kind of be like, you know, maybe it's like um, when I was first started uh, working, I had a boss that was a devil and I found this workout class and it was two days a week. And I said, you know what? I'm going to this class two days a week. I'm like, I need something in my life because work is just making me absolutely right. miserable. And I'm 25 years old at the time. So I don't really know where I found the stones to say this to my boss. And I'm like, hey, um, just so you know, I found this really good workout class on Monday and Wednesdays. So I'm going to have to leave right at five. The rest of the week, you know, I could do whatever you need. But Monday and Wednesday, I'm going to this workout class and I need to leave at five. And she was like, oh, and like she's like, tell me about it. And I was like, please don't ask to come. Please don't ask to come. Because <laughs> I'm going to say it's too far. It's on Mars. So like, I'm just going to be like, I don't want you coming. <laughs> And she was like, cool. And I remember like, you know, a couple months had gone by and she came to my you know, at my desk and she, it was like, you know, 440. And she's like, hey, can you get this done? And I was like, oh, remember I'm going to that workout class, um, but I could do it first thing tomorrow morning. Now I could have crumbled and not gone, but I was right. like, I, I have to hold the line because I knew she was that person who would always at like 10 or five, can you get this done? Can you get that done? And it's, you know, something that easily could have waited. Um, but that was kind of like my first, like, wow. I didn't know at the time I didn't know it was a boundary. I, I wasn't that evolved, but I was like, I need to do this because I hate my job and I hate you as <laughs> my boss. Good for you. And I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people don't, they never even thought, like you said, we're not involved, evolved enough to think boundaries a lot of times, but it's not to be mean. I think that's what scares some people. It yeah, because like, you're being bitchy. I just right? said, no, I will not be able to. And what you heard was, no. Right. right? In our head, we projected that we're like, we're being exactly. a two-year-old and we're not going to leave the toy store. <laughs> but it's like, no, I'm trying to protect my sanity. And that's right. you, our relationship is toxic, but I don't have the words to say that to you. So, but if I say I want to work out, most people aren't going to say no. If you're like, no, most people are, if, I, if I'm saying I'm just trying to better myself, right? Most people are not going to say no. But that's exactly what it is. Like I tell people, boundaries are not to be negative. They yeah. are to protect, like you said, your sanity, yourself, your goals, and your values. Because outside of say work, or even outside of your family dynamic, you may have your own goals. You right. may have your own values. How do you protect that? Or do you just say, no, oh, man, I'm going to kick that to the curb. Suddenly you're feeling off balance, but you don't know why. And it's right. because you're not doing anything for yourself. Yeah. And even as a parent, you know, I have a lot of clients who are parents that, you know, they've told their kids, you can't be in everything. You got to pick what you like the best, right? You can't be in dance and basketball and hockey and this and that, like pick what you like the best because you're like, I can't be running all over creation. Right. Right. Absolutely. And you want your kids to excel, but it's like, are they really the best dancer or are they better a soccer player? I, I just had to go through that. So totally understand what you mean. Cause I just had to go through that. And I was like, I had to accept Yeah, My daughter's really, she's been in dance for years. She still gets up on that stage and looks like her arms are just flailing all right. like she just <laughs> over started the place. Yesterday. And I had a conversation with her and right. it's not to be mean, but is this really what you want to do? 
Right. Or you do it because you don't really practice it. it. Right. Exactly. You know, so absolutely. One of my friends, her daughter, same thing. And she's like, are you doing it because, you know, you've always been doing it or your friends do it? And she's like, kind of. And then she's like, you know what? That's one less thing we need to do. And one less thing I need to shuttle you to. And then she found out she really likes swimming. So now like she's a swimmer and she's like thriving as being a swimmer and, you know, less angst about, oh, I'm going to be the person in the back corner who's going to be over here when everyone else is over there. Right. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the other thing you said, and a lot of my people listening, they tell me all the time that even though their stress is pin high, exercise is the only thing that reduces my stress. It's the only thing, Kim. And, you know, as much as I say to them, I'm like, if you're already at the boiling point, all we're doing is adding more hot water to that pot by exercising. You know, so it's like, mm-hmm. I love how you said there's other ways to like release than going to the gym and like, yeah. you know, throwing around weights. Yeah. And, and is exercise the only thing? And I say that because I think a lot of people accept I, I'm going, uh, here's my routine. Mm, I exercise. It. And I decide that's that. it. It's my routine. But they yeah. haven't tried anything else. Thousand percent. Is exercise really the only thing that could, you know, that could do that? And should you be waiting until you get to your boiling point? Why does it have to be right at your boiling point? Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and so that's why again, where I go back to the practice, even small things that you do daily can stave it off prevent yeah. right does that mean you'll never have stress absolutely not because it's inevitable right right but you may stave it off or you and i think a lot of people don't think that way maybe today you didn't have stress because you have practiced how not to get stressed out about every little thing yeah. maybe you dealt you got you had stress but it was at this level as opposed to this level because of the work that you've been putting in all along to take care of yourself and to manage your stress levels and to decide because I'm telling you I love that book right to not sort the small things yeah right because we make bigger a lot of times than it really needs to be does everything need to cause this level yeah no yes I, uh, I, you know, again, when I bought, read that book, and if you've never read that book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, it's still, I don't know, it's probably 20 years old by now, but it still is relevant because I, last night having dinner and um, my sister-in-law told someone a date and they got it wrong. So then they called the office and they said, hey, Lisa told me this was the date. And they're like, what are you talking about? So everyone's kind of like, wait, did we screw something up? And then she's got like all stressed out. I'm like, one person screwed up the date and now it's a thing. I'm like, go to that person. She got it wrong. Like, you know, it wasn't like I was, uh, you know, meant to, it wasn't like the woman meant to do it on purpose. Like she got the date wrong. Like, why is it now stress for you? Right. Right. Absolutely. And I think, so we, we, the same way we keep a lot of stuff, like we tell ourselves, um, we tell ourselves that we're supposed to be doing all of these things when really we don't always have to be the one to do all no. these things. And I'm going to tell you, I had to acknowledge the fact that I have a control issue <laughs> that it's not going to get done. Right. It's not going to get done the way it needs to get done. If I'm not doing it, I didn't necessarily see it that way. No, I still no believe that about certain things, but I had to quell that down a bit. Mm-hmm. I really did yes. um, and say, yeah, it may not get done the way I want it. It may not even be done optimally, but is this one of these things that has to be done optimally? Right. Like I want, the easiest one I can think about is like unloading the dishwasher or loading the dishwasher, right? It's like some of us have our ways that the dishwasher needs to be loaded or unloaded. And if that means you let your kids do it, so you have five minutes. Exactly. <laughs> let your kids do it. And you know, and, and go for the C plus. Like let, let it go be a, for this. Oh my God, I love that. Let it be okay. Like because it's like if I think about it, I'm like that's one less. It's ten minutes less for me to deal with it. 
I'm teaching them a good job. So yeah, rock on with your bad self. Maybe the dishes are all this way inside. It's okay. They're all over the place. We'll right. do it yet later. As okay. long as the whirly thing doesn't get caught, I'm good. <laughs> Load it right. however you want. We're not going to be out here also getting stressed out about whether the toilet paper is over or, or under. under. Right. Get stressed out about that. Like right. we, we, we hold a lot of things and we say we have to do it. And I was guilty of that. Like I couldn't even figure out, okay, who am I? Who would I? Dele delegation didn't even come into my head. Right. And now I'm just like, no, I'm not doing that. You could do that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> you could do that, right? <laughs> like, right. <you> know? <laughs> this was, this is probably like, God, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, I went to uh, a conference and there was a woman there and she talked about your stop doing list. And she said, you know, everyone in here is a, you know, business woman and we all have a list of things that are on our to-do list. And she said, I would love for you to look at your to-do list. And is there anything on that list? She's like, both home and work. She's like, is there anything on that list that you physically do not need to do? And put that on your stop doing list. And so it was like, you know, the dishwasher, taking out the trash, you know, like, do you have to be the person to cook dinner every single night? No. And, you know, I've had people be like, well, my, my, my family would order pizza every night if I didn't make dinner. And I was like, well, they could order you a salad with chicken on top, right? And they could have pizza or, to, <laughs> or tell them, Hey, every night we ain't having pizza. Like, you know, order anything you want, but every night can't be pizza. But it's right. like, so many of us get caught in our mind that like, we have to save our families from themselves. Like if we gave guidelines, I think our families could do pretty well. Right. 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 And start off slow. My thing yeah. now is I, uh, we taught my son how to make rice in an instant pot. No, you don't have yes. to make it in a regular pot. <laughs> right. Make it an instant pot. So now I'm like, each one, teach one. Now teach your nine-year-old to how to make the rice. Right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, you teach. And then when I was a kid, I remember I thought it was like, uh, I thought my mom was mean that she taught me how to do, do my own laundry. No, she was saving herself time. <laughs> Yeah. And so, so. It's, so as you, it's one of the big things that I think why we have trouble de delegating is you said it, I said, you nailed, you nailed it. Trust issues. Uh, sorry. Uh, control issues, right? Like we want things done in this way. And if they aren't done in this way, we get all like stressed out. Right. And we genuinely cannot see, like we can't see it any other way, but you have to challenge yourself to see it a different way way that you don't have to do you know figure out take the three things what do i have to do yeah right then of what you don't have to do what do i really want to do right um and so what's left is what i don't have to do and what i don't really want to do and right. now you can start to use you could take that and delegate or novel concept decide that didn't even need to be done in the first place like we could just, just throw this out all together right? exactly. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, completely. <laughs> um there's a i think it's geico there's a commercial and it's about like talking about how not to be your parents and one of the oh. commercial one of the commercials is like take keeping like the butter the butter containers for like leftovers or you know keeping things around and you, they're standing in front of the dumpster like do you need that and he's like, you know, they're throwing out all this like crap that you're just like holding on to. And what you're just talking about is like, we're holding on to all these like tasks and, you know, ways things have to be done. And we're like, do I need to hold on to it? Do I need to care that much about, like you said, the toilet paper? Do we need to care that much that I cook the rice versus my son cooking the rice? Like, can I let yeah. some of this stuff go? Yeah, which by the way, he's pretty good at doing. I mean, if you could be good, shot, <laughs> if you could be good at rice, like rice is one of those things that if you can master it, like my grandmother could make some really good rice, you know, all you need is a little salt and butter on it, and it's just right, right. Nice. <laughs> That's just one of those, like, you're like, if you get rid of rice, you're gonna be a really good cook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, as your son ages and he starts you start get a little bit more into his repertoire, he's going to be like, you know, Bobby Flay. 
Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, here you're a physician. So you had a health scare, which made you sit down. Are you still kind of infusing into, um, you know, before you had the health scare, were you infusing the self-care into your practice? Well, oh, I was good at telling other people about. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, fabulous at it. <laughs> no, you got to take care of yourself, sir. Sir? <laughs> sir, you're important too. You have to take care of yourself. You, I know you're telling me you have to be there for your family, but what if you're not because you didn't take care of yourself, right? In order to take care of yourself, okay, you, you in order to take care of them, you have to take care of yourself. So let, let me just say this. <laughs> I, I'm, a little, I'm a little different now, yeah. right? So one, yeah, I used to tell people that all the time. I, I just wasn't living, as I said. Right. Now. But two, I try to stay away from the, in order to take care of other people, you need to take care of yourself. And I'm oh, going to yeah. tell you why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it feels like martyrdom. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Like the sole reason I'm going to do it is because I have to take care of other people. What if you didn't have children or whatever? You wouldn't take care of yourself? Yeah. What if it wasn't about work? You, would, you, you don't think you're worth taking care of? It feels like martyrdom. And I'm like, let go of the martyrdom, right? And and just focus for a moment on taking care of yourself. Because what that allows is it allows you to do self-care on your terms. Um, sometimes it's like when you said with your when you said that person said about their daughter, okay. Are you going to the dance class because you want to or because it's something that you could do with your friends because your friends like it, right? Right. She loves being with her friends, but right. does she like the dance? Right. That was her thing. The swim became her thing. Right. Right. A lot of us do self-care the way people look at self-care as a self-care thing. So that's why I was a contributor in this self-care is not a Manny petty because I wanted people to understand it's bigger than this. It's mm. bigger than going and get a manicure and pedicure, which I think is art. If you've seen some right. of these man, oh, just, uh, I mean, first of all, I, I I wish I had the patience for right. the nail art. I really wish I had the right. patience for that. Right, I don't either. I I, right. like, I admire it. Like one, I wouldn't have the patience to to do it. I don't have the patience to have it done to me. No, no, at all. I, even when I go, I usually go because maybe I have a function that I need to go to. Spot on. But when, <laughs> yes. But there was a time when I made it a thing. Even when I think back, I made it a thing because that was part of the sign of she takes care of herself. Yeah. So I went and got the nails done. I still didn't want to sit there for you to do the artwork. Just do that French manicure or something. Right. I don't want to What's the fastest one? Do you have an express but, one? Right, exactly. <laughs> Um, but it's beautiful. And a lot of people that do it tell me it's the time that I get to sit there and do something for myself, not for my kids. If that's what works for you, wonderful. But I think a lot of people are doing what society says is, uh, is self-care and not individualizing right. exactly. their, their self-care. So figure out what recharges you, what gives you that joy. And that's the one you need to do. Now, when you can feel recharged, you can give your full self to other things. You'll start to see yourself level up, right? Because you're getting that balance back because you actually did something for you. How many people out there do, they go to work and they come in, they do homework with the kids. They spend some time with the kids. The kids may go to bed at eight and you're probably supposed to go to bed at nine, but you don't go to bed at 10 till 10. And maybe it's because... How many of us do that so we can have quiet time in the house yeah. to ourselves? Right. Right. And so staying up that extra hour or two hours is important just for that. Right. There's actually right? A, a term for that. They call it revenge bedtime. <laughs> I never heard that. Wow. Yeah. It's like for, for, you know, parents who are like running out, you know, running crazy with their kids all day long. And it's that like quiet time after the kids go to bed that they're like, I can finally either watch whatever I want on TV <laughs> or just sit and read a book or whatever right. without Absolutely. the guilt. Even though, okay, I could get an extra hour to make that eight, 
you're like, no, I'd rather take this time and it's just me. Right. I'll get the seven. Right. Yeah. So what I tell people is figure out what you like and what gives you joy and recharges you and, and, and do self-care on your own terms. Will other things, will the job, will the, the family, will they benefit from you feeling so recharged? Yeah, but they're what I call, you know, we talk about collateral damage. They're what I call your collateral beneficiaries. It yeah. just so happens they get a better version of you. It so happens. I I don't feel like people should do it because, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm going to do it so they can get what they need. No, do it so you can get what you need and the rest will fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. No, I absolutely like that. And, and uh, I think one of the reasons why we were talking about, you know, going back to why people do exercise or this, you know, post bedtime thing, it's because it's something that doesn't require them to be, to be suck at it. Right. Like I've already been exercising, so I'm not going to suck at it. But if I tried maybe yoga, I might suck at it. I might be the only person in the room who can't put my knee to my, my head or, you know, some other thing, uh, knitting, I might suck at it. And I don't want to, I, I want to go in and, and nail it versus like, that's the art of it is the learning, the process. And, yeah. you know, I think many of us just get caught in this like cycle that like, I need to be the best. I need to be good at it. You know, I need to like pick it up like this versus right. struggling with it. And absolutely coming up with a saying like, it's okay. It's okay if I'm not good, right? It's okay if my first, I can't imagine that Picasso painted his first painting and everyone was like, oh my God, he's a natural. Like, I can't imagine that was the reaction. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have um someone who was my childhood best friend actually, um, but we lost touch and I found her again on social media. She had a good amount of children. <laughs> I was like, are those all your kids? She's like, yeah, she had a good amount of children. She needed some me time. So she decided I'm going to take a class about just a small class, last a few weeks about baking cakes. She loved it. Yeah. She said at the end, she's like, my cake wasn't even that good. People were like, oh, that looks great. She said, I knew it didn't look great, but it didn't matter. I loved it. Do you know she has her own bakery now? Yeah. Because she loved it so much. She took the next class just for her. It was her me time. Right. Then the next one. Then the next one. Then someone said to her, could you bake me a cake? Then people were asking her to bake wedding cakes because she started to get really good at it. Right. But it started off from, I just needed some me time. Right. And her cake might have looked like this at the very right. beginning. <laughs> and eventually it leveled itself out. Exactly. exactly. But yeah. And and I, I love like stories like that. Cause I like I think it was either I think it was either Ina Gartner or I definitely know it was Martha Stewart, but Martha Stewart basically she was a stockbroker and she liked to cook. And that's how where the Martha Stewart we know of started. Yeah. It wasn't because like I'm gonna have chickens in my backyard and teach you how to bake a cake. While you know doing milking a cow, like it's just she was a stock, <laughs> she was a stockbroker right. that got burnt out and was just like I need to do something that brings me joy. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I love stuff like that too. I mean, because that's where you hear people say, "If you find something you enjoy, you never work a day in your life." I it's work, but it could be enjoyable work. I you know, right. but you know, it, when I hear stuff started off as, I just really enjoy doing that for me right it just so happens that I got really good at it and realized I could make money <laughs> right or you or you just kind of figured out you're like hey I really like this and maybe like your friend like my cake sucked in the very beginning and it took me seven years to get good at this okay and or maybe you're just like I just wanted to be able to make my kid a birthday cake that you know I didn't have to buy all the damn time right right so wonderful. I I love so I I want people to let go of the martyrdom. Yeah. Of self care. <laughs> you right. know, and really start to do that on their terms of what you know, what really makes them feel at their best. You know, when we when we feel like we're taking care of ourselves, when we start to feel balanced, that's when we really start to shine and be at our best. We could feel ourselves stagnate and wonder why. Now, the type A personalities, yes, we know who we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the type A personalities, yes. <laughs> um, you know, 
we could shine for a long time. Very mm -hmm. stressed out. But what we all need to understand is that our crash and burn can be so bad. Yeah. <laughs> if we're not taking care of ourselves, um, we can live with that stress for a long time. It could be years. Yeah. But the crash and burn when it happens, if we don't address it in, on time, yeah. so bad. Yeah, it can look like Hiroshima if yeah. we don't take if we don't take um uh care of it. Um yeah. I, this has been like such a really good conversation. And I feel like you've just given, you know, I love when my guests give just like these little like bite-sized takeaways, right? You didn't give them this, here's your checklist. Make sure you get this all done. It was just like little bite-sized nips of information that you decide what product feels for you right now, you know, because I feel yeah. that so many women are like, where's the checklist? No, there's no checklist. You make the checklist. Mm. And even if you found it one takeaway, like the one thing you said, was yes. like, the, you're like, I set a timer on my phone. And if I, as long as I'm not driving, that's my reminder. Do a D Dr. Judy, like what's going on, Dr. Judy? Where are we? Check in. And yeah. even if it just starts there, like you yeah. I think you started it. I think we started the conversation with awareness, right? If I'm not yeah. aware, how do I know? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And if, and if you are that person who's like, this is just my life. I'm just stressed out. Awareness still plays into this because maybe if you're still, if you're at that high level of stress, maybe there's a point in the day that that, that stress goes up just a touch more. And maybe that's where you start to notice. So that maybe those peaks become your warning signal so that maybe when you get when you're still at that high level you can start to lower it up and hopefully lower it a little bit right or, or even when it gets even higher if you're not being aware of yourself and you're used to being here which is already high and suddenly shoots up so that you can say no well this no this is the, a touch too much yeah but that awareness you had that this is even more then you can handle i need to do something now Right. Um, it's very helpful. Yeah. So I ask all of my guests before we close the show, what's one thing that makes you feel magical? What is one thing travel? Oh, oh my goodness. We, I, just, <laughs> we just became spirit sisters. Yes, 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 yes. So I'm going to have to follow that up. Are you like a cold weather person, beach, mountains? I love warm weather. Mm -hmm. My family's originally from Jamaica. Ah. Um, I do I do love warm weather. But a few years ago, uh, I just needed to, we just need to go. I was like, I need to go away. And I wanted to do it in Christmas, which is something we never did. And we went to Vermont. Oh. And I really enjoyed it. <laughs> like, you know, just the 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 coziness of of looking out, there's snow. There, it was cold. Oh yeah, you know, but we were ready. We we got gear. <laughs> we were ready for the cold. And so for me, it's just being able to see new things. Now I'm not one of those people who want to pack my vacation with. We have to no. go somewhere every day. I'm no. not that person. <laughs> no, not at all. I am like that, that's for me. I'm like that's my life. Like my life is like, hey, I got a call at 11:30 and got this at three. That's my life on vacation. It's like beach or pool or lunch like that's like the that's biggest that, decision right. i want to make right but if i can see one or two things yes right so i don't even like i don't even for the most part book excursions ahead of time no no what you got available now right yeah if it, one or two things but also to get to get to speak to people in the culture, because I love that. Like we went to Barcelona some years ago and we were walking to the train station and realized there was a street fair. So we went to the street fair and we started to interact with the people and the vendors. And then I met somebody who was an expat from Portugal. She was the sweetest thing, right? Like we started talking and our kids started playing. That was so organic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that I loved it. 
That's my favorite. Yeah. I I love um like meeting local people. Like wherever we go, like we always try to find like the off the beaten path stuff because I just like I want to meet regular people because that t- like tells you like and they'll tell you like oh you should eat here you should go there versus yes. all the like touristy trappy places. Yes, yes. So travel, um, uh, which I had not been doing a lot of in those latter years pre pandemic. Yeah, it has slowed down, but that was part of I was edging toward burnout. Mm. Um, but now, I'm I'm back in the streets. Get out of my um, way. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> so perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. So where can people find you on the socials? Oh yeah. So. I am on Instagram. My handle is Judy Wright MD. I try to make it easy for everybody. Yep. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. And again, my handle is Judy Wright MD. Perfect. Um, you could also, my website is JudyWrightMD.com. So I try to keep it simple. Very simple. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> for everybody. But yeah. Um, you know, feel free, reach out, you know, love to connect. And you also have a podcast as well. Yeah. So my podcast is about to start shortly. I'm in the next couple of weeks and it's called the balance to excellence podcast, where I'm going to be looking to speak to people who work in organizations about how are they working with their teams? Cause I'm big Ooh, on employee wellness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how are they working with their teams? What's working for them? What's not working for them? You know, so we can give out some pearls there, but I truly honestly believe that these organizations, these corporations, you know, these, these academic spaces, you can't expect to thrive if your greatest resource, which is your employees are, barely surviving yeah right so yeah you need to encourage them to prioritize their overall wellness and that includes stress management that includes self-care that includes understanding that they're a whole person it's not just about this job that they work for you eight nine ten hours a day they have families they have friends you know encourage them to prioritize their wellness and you will start to see your goals their goals and your goals you know escalate and do I, well. I love that because you're absolutely right. You know, uh, when I was in corporate, you know, they could give a rat's hind part about your outside mental health. It was more like productivity, productivity, productivity. And a lot of it is, you know, really encouraging your, your employees, like take that vacation time, take that sick day. Don't be here till 10 o'clock at night. So I, I, I right. think that what you're right. What so you're you, going to you, get you'll get the best version of them because so you'll be the collateral beneficiary right. of the fact that this person feels great. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And they, they're not like looking back and miss feeling like I missed, you know, my kids' baseball game or what have you because I was prioritizing uh work. So I, I think your podcast is so needed in the space, especially nowadays, you know, with everyone doing three jobs, you know, three jobs for the price of one. Absolutely. So I encourage everybody to connect with me, learn more about when it's getting ready to start. It's going to be on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, you know, Spotify. So I encourage everyone to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram. All right, friends, have a magical day and reach out to her. If you're feeling stressed out or you're just like this, hit you on all levels. Let her know what's going on with you. All right, Magic Makers, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.